Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. I had a person in the Cheap Controls private Facebook group ask if it was possible using an LED output or just an output on the Arduino in general to control an image on the Nexion display. I worked through an example and I thought it might make an interesting video, so I'm going to go over that today. I'm going to start in the Arduino. I'm going to use two LEDs on the Arduino and I'm going to set them up to turn on and off based upon different timings. And I'm going to use that to control two buttons on the Nexion display. They'll be dual action buttons and based upon the LED will show the buttons on the Nexion display as on or off. I've defined LED 1 as pin 13 and LED 2 as 12. I'm going to have one LED will have a 2.5 second delay and the other one will have a 5 second delay. And then for my timing I've set up a LED 1 milliseconds and an LED 2 milliseconds so I can keep track of the timing and do it asynchronous. I've set up serial 1 to be a local monitor if I need it and serial 2 to connect to the debug mode on the Nexion display. I'm not going to use an actual display for this. And then I set my pin modes for 13 and 12. I could have put LED 1 and 2 here as output. And then I set the two LED millisecond variables equal to the current millisecond, so I'm starting right on time. To speed up the pace of the video, I'm going to do some cutting and pasting. The first part of this is just turning the LED on and off and sending the signal to the Nexion. And what I have is if you've seen a past videos of mine, I have a video on synchronous versus asynchronous, in other words using the delay command as opposed to not using the delay command, which we won't be doing in this example. I'll put a link up in the upper right to that video. What we're going to do is we're going to take the current millisecond value and we're going to subtract whatever we want the delay to be. And if that value is greater than what we set the milliseconds to be, in other words if that amount of time has gone by, we want it to execute this code down here. For that first 2.5 seconds or 5 seconds, we, want to, we need this command in here. You don't really need it for the tutorial, but what will happen is it will freak out a little bit because until this milliseconds reaches the 2,500 milliseconds or 5,000 milliseconds, it will act a little bit funny. So the only reason we have this line in here is so it won't do anything until it gets to that initial value. Then it will pretty much ignore this because the milliseconds will always be greater than what the delay is. For the first one we're just doing LED 1. I'm going to print out a line that just says what it is. So pin 13, which is LED 1, will be set to pin 13, and it's just going to read out what it currently is. Is it on or is it off? And then we're going to digitally write to it the opposite. This exclamation point means the opposite or not whatever we're reading it at. So if we read it as a 1, it's going to turn it to a 0. If we read it as 0, it's going to turn it to a 1. And on this line, we're going to read that value again just to show that it changed. I do go back and forth between pin 13 and LED 1. It doesn't matter how you do this, I just wanted to show both ways. And then finally we're going to send the value to the Nexion here. And this is button 0, value. We don't have to escape out anything because it's a value. And we're just going to read the current value of LED 1 and send it up and write it to the display. The nice thing about the display is if you're using a dual action button, it has two states, 0 and 1, and that's exactly what we're reading off the LED. So we don't have to modify it or parse it or do anything with it. It's pretty nice. And then the last thing we do is we're going to set it equal to the current milliseconds. So that way we know we'll have the 2.5 second delay again. I'm going to upload this just to make sure it works up to this point. And you can see the LED is flashing on and off. And it's flashing on and off at a 2.5 second um, rate. So it'll be on for 2.5 seconds and then off for 2.5 seconds. 
going to open the next shin now and put it in debug mode so you can see the button change also. I've, both, I've started both the Nexion in debug mode and the Arduino going and you can see that they're flashing so when this light goes on that light goes on and when it goes off it goes off. So what we're doing is, is we're reading the value of this we're using the timer to change it but we're reading the value of it and uploading it to the light. I'm going to go back to the Arduino now and add in the second light. Now this is exactly the same as we had before, we just change LED2 delay, which we have set up to be 5,000 or 5 seconds. And then we digitally write to LED2 whatever the opposite of what we read from LED2, so we're going to flip it. So every 5 seconds we'll change it, and then we're going to serially print that LED2 and the state of it. And then we're going to write to button number one. Up here we wrote to button zero. We're going to write to button one the value as we read it. I'm going to upload this code and show you that. And now you can see that these lights change too. That when this light changes, these light, and they're on a pretty close to the same sequence, except for this one, where LED one is going to flash at twice the rate of LED two. So you can see in here how we can use the just by reading the value of the output, then you can assign it. And if you have pictures assigned, which now we're going to go over to the next and I'll show you that we can we're changing the picture of this. So this is the next layout right here. I have two text box and two dual state buttons. In the dual state buttons, you have a attribute called STA. And in that you can select it to be a color crop image or image. I just have image because I have the image in the, in the exact size that I want it to be. And then you have two states to that button. You have pick with nothing and pick two. So when, when the button isn't pushed you show I have image zero selected and when the button is pushed I have image one selected. And over here in my list of images ID 0 and ID 1. If you had more images you could put 3 or 4 or 5 and it would work just fine. When you have a dual state button and the Arduino sends the value it is assigning the value. And So when I send it a 1 if I come up here I'm selecting pick 2 and that's the green button and I'm considering 1 to be on and 0 to be off. So when I send a 0 which sets the value to 0 it shows picture zero and over here picture zero is the is the red. Now for this example I'm going to add a little twist. When we push the button, button zero or button one, it's going to execute this code down here. I have a variable set up VA0 and it's set to be a string. The moment you push this button it's going to assign BT0 or if I push BT1, BT1 value and it's going to turn it into text and it's going to put it in that in that variable. And then the next line it's going to assign this text. I've selected BT1 and BT0 to be placed in there but I could put anything in there. But I have to know what I'm putting in there because it's going to be sent to the Nexion display. And then the Nexion display is going to read that and it's going to do something with that. So every time I push it, it's going to send a 1 or a 0 and then the button name. We'll go back to the Arduino and I'll show you what I mean. Now I've pasted in these lines right here, this if serial2.available. At the end of the video, there's a link to a video that goes into more depth on this. But when the action sends the data, that 0 button 0 or 1 button 0, it's going to trigger this because it will make Serial 2 have data available. We're going to do a very quick delay and then we're going to read in the data. So while Serial 2 is available we're going to read it in. And then we're going to look at the substring. But if the second, third, and fourth characters are BT0 it's going to execute what's in here. And if the second, third, and fourth characters are BT1 it's going to execute what's in here. And it's going to do this every time through the loop. So it's going to do this thousands of times a second. 
So it's going to always be checking for that data. So if you push that button at any point in time, it's going to execute this code in here. And if it makes it into here and it recognizes it, it's going to digitally write LED1 and LED2 the value of the first character, which is either going to be a 0 or a 1. So it's going to change that LED, the value that's sent to it. So if we turn it off, it will turn it off. And if we hit the button to turn it on, it'll turn it on, no matter what state it's currently in. But remember, we're reading the state dynamically. So the second that light changes from the Arduino, it's going to send the change up. So we're going to be able to force a change even though the Arduino is changing every five seconds and every two and a half seconds, we're going to be able to force it to change. And if we do force it to change, we're going to reset the timer again. So it'll take either two and a half seconds or five seconds to change again. It's a little bit confusing, but this code is available at CheapControls.com and I would recommend you download it and you play with it a little bit. It's a very interesting example of doing things dynamically and especially using this millisecond variable to mess with the timing. I'm going to upload this now and I'll show it to you with the debug connection and the live um, camera on the Arduino. So if you watch, we have the lights changing the buttons and in a way it's changing the image on the buttons because we're sending it a value. And you can see that it's, it's doing the pause just like you would expect. But if I hit the button, it will change also. See how I can make the LED change quickly? And even though I'm changing it back and forth, the minute I decide to stop changing it, it's going to wait that full two seconds or two and a half seconds to change. So the timing when you hit the button resets and starts all over. It'll be easier to see it on this button. So I'm going to click this button off and on and then I'm going to stop it about when that light changes. So now this should change about twice before this light changes again. And then it came back on. So we can use the next to cause the lights to change and you can call it, and you can use the lights changing on the Arduino to cause the next to change and you can do that simultaneously. And one of the main reasons you can do that is because in this example we used asynchronous timing. I'm going to go back to the Arduino one more time. And by not using the delay in here, it, it executes this statement thousands of times a second but only executes what's in here when the conditions are met. If we put a delay in here for two and a half seconds, it would cause the whole processor to stop and we wouldn't be looking for this information down here. You'd hit the button, but it wouldn't do anything. You'd have to hit it exactly on that time in between the delay statements because it would run the delay for two and a half seconds, freeze the processor, and then it would run really quickly through the loop and then it would freeze the processor again you'd have to hit the buttons exactly when that processor was running. Like I said earlier, this is a really good one to download and look at if you want to look at the delays. And you can change the delays to different values. And when I say change the delay, I mean up here. Change these numbers to different values. You can make them quicker and slower and see what happens. The other thing you can do is stick a delay in here. Add delay. You could add delay of 5,000, which is a five second delay, and see how it affects what you're doing in there. Even breaking a thing can help you learn something. I hope you found this video entertaining because I had a lot of fun making it. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.